And we're going to talk today about salvation. Uh, first of all, for salvation, you have to recognize that you have need of a Savior. And so, let me ask you a question. Have you, uh, are, you in, are you involved in sin? Have you ever committed adultery? Have you ever had sex, undefiled sex, or unmarried sex? Have you ever stolen anything? Have you ever told a lie? All these are sins. All these things um, separate you from God. And the important part you need to understand about salvation is that you need God. You're not going to get out of this world alive without God. You're going to spend eternity somewhere. You're going to spend it in heaven. You're going to spend it in hell. And you don't want to spend it in hell. You think your life may be hell now. You think you may be going through hell right now. This is nothing. This is kitty land. This is what this is compared to what hell is going to be an eternal torment. Something that you really don't want to be involved with. You know, and I don't want to scare you. I don't want to, to do anything but encourage you to put your sin aside and to accept the life that Jesus Christ has for you. He has so many blessings in store for you. He has tremendous gifts and, and, and he has tremendous blessings that he has just waiting for you right now. That he has, the Bible tells us that, that, um, that he knew us before that we were conceived in our mother's womb and that he planned out every step of our lives. Now it's our obligation to, to decide whether we're going to stay in that plan or we're going to veer off. And so, and even those, even though that we veer off, and we all veer off, I veered off, everybody that, and everybody that I know has veered off the path at some point. But he's made provision to get us back on that path. And this is what I want to share with you, is that Jesus Christ died a horrible, tragic death that we could live. And that we would have life and life more abundantly. You know, um... The road, the Christian road, the Christian walk, the Christian life is not easy. It's a hard life. But the thing is, you don't have to go at it alone. Not only is God constantly and forever with you, because He said He'll never leave you nor forsake you, but not only that, but you have the backbone of the church. Because the Bible tells us that as iron sharpens iron, so shall one man sharpen another. And no, you have to go through things that you go through by yourself, but you have your family, you have your community to go with you. Take these into account and consider the way your life is now. If you go through something, who's there? Who's really there? Who's there that you can depend on? You know, maybe your mom is there, maybe your dad is there, maybe your sister, your wife, your husband, whatever the case may be. But those are people, and people can let you down. You know, maybe not intentionally, uh, but you know what? It can happen. But there's one that can never let you down. It will never let you down. It will cease to exist if he were to default on his promises. He said that he'll never leave you, nor forsake you. He said that if he, that he will never leave you in a place of temptation. If you, without leaving your way of escape, that he's there for you, always and forever. So what I want to do is tell you this, that Jesus is the salvation. The Bible says that his name even is I am. That is his name, I am. I am everything. I'm your provision. I'm your help. I'm your healer. I'm your guide. I'm your comfort. He's anything and everything you could ever need or want in this life. And he's there. The Bible has this. All he says is that he knows the desires of your heart. And he's willing to give them to you. Not as only willing, but he's well able to give you the desires of your heart. But seek you first the kingdom of God. This life is not about you. This life is not about me. This life is about him. And what we can do for him. We were created to worship. We were created to honor him. So put your eyes, put your focus upon the Lord. And any and every care that you have, he will, he will satisfy. He will take care of. And what, I mean, come on. How good can we take care of anything? How well can we take care of anything compared to God? He created the universe. He created everything. I want to ask you to take, to take Jesus into your heart right now. To accept him as your Lord and as your Savior. And let me tell you, Lord first. Make him Lord of your life first. You know, everybody wants a Savior. But it takes, it takes commitment to make him the Lord. Let him have rule over your life. And just let it go. And, and just think about the burden and the, the stress and the... Uh, that you'll have, that you'll be releasing when you let God take care of your life. You know, you don't have to worry about anything anymore. You don't have to worry about what you're going to eat or what you're going to wear. You don't have to worry about where your bills are going to, how your bills are going to be paid or, or any of those things. Because God's got that in hand as long as you have your, His kingdom in mind. So keep that in mind. And uh, you know, right now I just want to pray with you. So let's uh, let's bow our eyes. Let's close our eyes and just envision for a minute that you're standing before the throne room of God. Hallelujah, Father, we just thank you right now, hallelujah. Come before you humble, Father, and ask for forgiveness that we are sinners, hallelujah, that I am a sinner, and that I am in need of repentance, I am in need of a God, hallelujah. I repent for my sin right now, and every sin that I've ever committed, and every sin that I'll ever commit. 
And I just ask you to fill my heart and fill my days and fill my life with your presence and your anointing. And help me put a desire in my heart to seek after you and to know you. In the precious name of Jesus.